The American Competitiveness in the 21st Century Act AC21 was an act passed by the government of the United States in October 2000 pertaining to immigration to the United States. It was a complement to the American Competitiveness and Workforce Improvement Act that had been passed in 1998. The focus of AC21 was to change rules related to portability and caps for the H-1B visa to increase the effective number of visas available and make it easier for workers on those visas to switch jobs. Although the language of the Act references the Immigration and Naturalization Service INS, the INS would soon be restructured and the functions of the INS referenced in AC21 would be handled by United States Citizenship and Immigration Services. topic history A first version of the act was passed by the United States Senate on January 24, 2000. Amendments were reported on February 9th and April 11th of the same year. The bill became law upon being signed by Bill Clinton, the President of the United States at the time. On October 17, 2000, the USCIS has issued memoranda and guidance regarding provisions in AC 21 that have helped clarify the provisions and how these will be enforced. In 2001, 2003, 2005, and 2008. Topic: <laughs> Provisions. In summary, the provisions of AC-21 did the following They helped increase the efficiency of utilization both of the H-1B status for temporary skilled workers i.e., non-immigrant workers acquired by filing Form I-129, as well as the employment-based immigrant categories for immigration EB-1, EB-2, and EB-3, acquired through Form I-140, thereby increasing the number of people who at a given time could be in that status. Methods to do this included making unused slots or revoked petitions return to the pool, making transfers from one job to another possible without having them count towards the numerical limits, and exempting research institutions from the numerical caps on H-1B visas. They recognized the fact that the H-1B status was often used by workers eligible for an employment-based category but who had not yet received it either because their Form I-140 petition was stuck, or because they were waiting for their priority date to become current, or because their Form I-485 application for adjustment of status was taking a long time. To accommodate this reality, it provided for people to extend their H-1B status without having the extensions count toward limits. They changed the way the fees generated from H-1B were used, so as to address the issue of shortages of skilled labor within the United States. Topic. Section 102, Temporary Increase in Visa Allotments At the time that AC-21 was passed, there was a huge backlog in H-1B visa applications. The Act sought to increase to 195,000 the caps for fiscal years 2001 to 2003 and retroactively raise the caps for 1999 to include all cases approved after the cap was raised and before October 1, 2000 and for 2000 to include all cases filed after the cap was reached and before September 1, 2000. This temporary increase was not extended 2004 onward. However, the H-1B Visa Reform Act of 2004 made a more long-term but weaker increase in the number of H-1B slots, specifically, the first 20,000 applicants with master's degrees would be exempt from the cap of 65,000. <laughs> Section 103, Special Rules for Universities and Research Facilities This section introduced what has now become known as the uncapped H-1B. Prior to AC-21, all H-1B visas were counted towards the annual cap. Section 103 provided that employees of higher educational institutions, non-profit research organizations, and government research organizations would not be counted toward the H-1B cap. An earlier version of AC-21 had included all recipients of graduate degrees as eligible for uncapped H-1Bs, but the provision was removed from the final bill. 
The section also specified that people whose current H-1B is on an uncapped visa will be counted toward the cap if they switch to a job that is subject to a cap any job other than at a higher educational institution. Non-profit research organization, or government research organization. The special rules for universities and research facilities were further expanded with the H-1B Visa Reform Act of 2004. Topic. Section 103 Continued, Counting Rules Prior to AC 21, if an individual filed a H-1B petition for a new job while already on a H-1B, the new petition was counted towards the annual cap. Now those who had already been counted towards a cap in the last six years were not counted towards the cap, and a person filing multiple petitions was counted towards the cap only once. One obvious effect of this was to reduce the pressure on the numerical cap, making it easier for those changing jobs but also reducing the competition for first-time cap subject applicants. Another effect, particularly in future years when the cap would get filled in the first week of April six months before the start of the fiscal year on October 1, was that people could switch jobs between employers without having to wait for the right time of year to make the transition, and without the six-month lead time that is de facto necessary for cap subject applications. Topic. Section 104 – Limitations on per-country ceiling with respect to employment-based immigrants The employment-based immigrant categories EB1, EB2, and EB3 have, in addition to an overall ceiling, per-country ceilings based on the country of chargeability. AC21 made unused slots from a given country available for use for the general category. Additionally, H-1B non-immigrants reaching the six-year limit of stay and with pending or approved I-140s but waiting for their priority date to become current, were allowed to extend their H-1B status in three-year increments until decisions were made on their adjustment of status applications. Topic. Section 105 – Increased portability of H-1B status A person already working in the U.S. on H-1B status would now be allowed to file a petition to work for a new employer and start working even before the petition is approved if the petition is filed before the end of the previous work authorization period. Work authorization ceases as soon as the petition is denied. The person can continue working in the new job for up to 240 days while the petition is being adjudicated. 